This is a crisis. Stage six, perhaps stage seven, ongoing blackouts are going to be the death knell of our economy and they're going to kill even more jobs. Your failure to treat this as a crisis is causing hardship and suffering to more and more South Africans every single day. 13 CEOs, four presidents, and 15 years, but load shedding is still a f***ing problem. Nothing has improved. I mean, in a country of 60 million plus people, you telling me we can't pick at least 10 smart people to fix ESCOM and this load shedding problem? Come on, is our government that useless or are they that greedy to sacrifice the whole country and financially cripple the economy to benefit themselves and their associates? You know, if anyone tries to fix ESCOM's problems, you're getting your ass fired. <laughs> If your solutions exposes the corruption that's happening there, you're getting fired. ESCOM and the government are captured by big business and the same people who brought us these problems are selling us the solution and none of their solutions work. Guys, it's like we are in a plane and the pilot only has a learner's license. I mean, excuse my French, but we are received billions in bailouts over the past decade, yet here we are, still mostly in the dark. Two ESCOM employees and a supplier have been arrested and charged with theft, fraud and corruption. Fuel worth millions of rand is being stolen from ESCOM's Creole power station in Bumalanga. A sophisticated crime syndicate, including corrupt officials, police and trucking companies, is said to be involved. In 1999, the government was given a warning on the fact that we were going to run out of power by 2007 if nothing was done to the ESCOM's current infrastructure. And guess what? Nothing was f***ing done. <laughs> you know, Tabumbi and the ANC, they were busy scrambling for power, trying to keep Zuma out of the picture. And one of the reasons why the government didn't take any action to expand ESCOM's capacity before 2007 is because they were already considering privatizing ESCOM. They were already planning on selling ESCOM for their own benefit. This has been a conspiracy from the jump. You see, Ramaphosa, he was looking at ESCOM like a fat ass chick. He was going to screw it good. So let's say that if the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act uh, findings and this uh, guilty plea from the new uh, Bancor leadership implicates uh, Ivan Glassenberg, let's look at uh, who his partners were. One of them was Cyril Ramaphosa, his main partner in South Africa, especially in the notorious Optimum Mine deal. And that was one that uh, when President Ramaphosa was deputy president and served as the ESCOM war room uh, leader in late 2014, he ensured that Glassenberg got much richer because they started paying uh, the Optimum mine owned by uh, uh, by Glencore and Shanduka and shared until recently by Ramaphosa himself a much higher amount for the coal. Now those are the sorts of things that we need to ask questions about. So what happened is, in 2012, Glencore, an international mining company, partnered with Ramaphosa to buy Optima. Optima was a local company that was supplying coals to ESCOM. You see, Ramaphosa had a 10% stake in that situation, and at the time, he was the vice president of ANC. He was also put president of Optima. At the same damn time, he was also made chairperson of the war room that was given a task by the government to fight load shedding. If you look at it, Cyril's interests were conflicted. He was the referee and the player in the same game. I felt that uh, Denko had been trying to extort 8 billion and that uh, the president had been made, a, well, the current president had been made a shareholder uh, in one of, in the optimum significant company that is the center of everything that has happened here. I, I'm, I'm saying this now because the fact that while we were recapping that was not mentioned, I hope that it is not being swept under the carpet and being uh, forgotten conveniently.
Now, it was discovered that Optimum owed ESCOM about 2 billion rands. Glencore, with the help of Ramaphosa, convinced ESCOM to scrap their debt. And on top of that, they were charging ESCOM inflated prices for the coal they were selling to them. Now, all of this was exposed by the then CEO Brian Molefe at the Zondo Commission when he was questioned about his part in the corruption that happened at ESCOM. But here's the funny thing. In 2015, the Gupta brothers bought Optimum with the influence that they had and the friendship that they had with the then president Jacob Zuma and with the help of some ESCOM executives, allegedly. Now, Brian Molefe stopped complaining when it was now the Guptas. He didn't try to cancel the contract. It was business as usual. So if you look at it, ESCOM was captured by different parties in different times. It's McKinsey's first admission of wrongdoing since the scandal broke in July. It says an internal investigation found violations of its professional standards but did not uncover any bribery or corruption. McKinsey says it never worked with the Gupta family and did not have a contractual relationship with Trillian. And I consulted. Former chairperson of Trillian, Tokyo Sohwale, who initiated an investigation into allegations of state capture against the Gupta Link Trillian, feels vindicated by this. I am very happy that Parliament has taken the kind of position that they have in growth, going thoroughly into the investigation and exposing the rot. Now, there's also the case of Mackenzie & Co. Mackenzie is an international management and consulting firm that was tasked to help ESCOM with their management situation. That was the worst decision. I mean, Mackenzie hired Trillian as a subcontractor. Trillian was linked to the Gupta brothers as well. And together, Trillian and Mackenzie, hey, these people, they milked ESCOM left, right, and center. Now, some ESCOM executives were called into the Zondo Commission to explain their part in the corruption that had happened at ESCOM. The court ruled that several decisions linked to Trillian were unlawful and invalid. While many may view this as a victory for ESCOM, Ted Blom, mining and energy advisor, says this figure is very significant considering the amount of money ESCOM actually needs. Certainly, if this is the pace of recovery, it's going to take us more than 240 years to recover all the amounts that are due to ESCOM. Yeah, we don't have that. And, on and our hands. in fact, due to the public, because uh, the public has been overpaying for electricity services for the last 10 years. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, 600 million rand, certainly not a, a, an amount to be scoffed at. It's a lot sure, of money. Sure, sure. But, but just give you the size in of, the, of the problem. Yeah. I suppose it pales in, con in comparison sure. to what the real figure actually stands at. Absolutely. By your calculations, if I'm not correct, and please correct me if sure. I am wrong, you say that in fact it's 1.4 trillion that ESCOM is owed. ESCOM has, has squandered uh, or, or spent or, de or stolen uh, 1.4 trillion rand extra excess from the public over and above what it was entitled to get. Wow. Now Ramaphosa, Glencore, the Guptas, with the help of Zuma, these people were finessing ESCOM quicker than an ugly chick being swindled on Tinder. I mean, every bailout that ESCOM got, it went into these people's pockets. You see, the government became the pimp and ESCOM was the hope and we were the sponsors giving money to the hope. <laughs> and like I said before, the same people who brought us the problem, they were also selling us the solution. And none of that shit was working. <laughs> McKinsey's new global head has apologized to South Africans for work the firm did with friends of former President Jacob Zuma. On Friday, power utility ESCOM said it had finalized a settlement agreement with McKinsey to pay back one billion rand, which was unlawfully paid out to the consultancy. McKenzie has lost many of its clients in South Africa. Since it emerged last year, it had partnered with local consultancy Trillion in order to win a 1.6 billion rand contract with ESCOM in 2016. Trillion was then controlled by the Gupta brothers who are under investigation over accusations that they used their friendship with Zuma 
to fraudulently win government contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Today, McKenzie's global managing partner, Kevin Snyder, admitted the company had overcharged for its work. First, our governance processes failed. Secondly, our commercial approach led to a fee that was too large. Three, we did not admit where we were wrong. Now, ESCOM is wasting a lot of money with these new power stations because they don't even work properly and they're also wasting money on maintenance that is not being done and they are paying for the service and also the corruption that is happening it's so bad inside that company the politically connected people are enriching themselves using that company and also the vandalism of infrastructure that's happening so that they can continue this load shedding i mean they can put security visible security at these substations because these are national key points and also the procurement of coal at ESCOM is costing them around 1 billion rands a week. I mean, that's a lot of money. These people can even buy their own coal mines and not have to procure coal from these corrupt companies. And last but not least, the ever-growing debt at ESCOM. You know, they can't even pay the debt. They are struggling to pay the interest of the debt every month. Now, if you look at the overall money that has been stolen or wasted at ESCOM from 2008 to 2019, it's sitting at around 1.4 trillion rands. I mean, that's a lot of money. And guess how much these people proposed that they're going to need to fix ESCOM so that it functions properly moving forward. 1.3 trillion rands. Crazy. Kosatu says the private sector producers are not the solution to the electricity crisis. They claim the IPPs are in fact draining the power utility and benefiting only a few. But government is adamant the independent producers are part of the energy mix in the country and critics argue that the IPPs involvement is expensive and extended their and extended rather their involvement will lead to massive job losses you see now we have new swindlers in town and they go by the name of ipps see ipp stands for independent power producers you see they are meant to provide alternative energy to help escom deal with load shedding and these ipps they use renewable energy which is solar, wind, and battery. Now, there's a conspiracy behind this new renewable energy direction that the country is taking, allegedly. See, it's been said that the IPPs are costing the country a lot more money than it's necessary, and they are killing ESCOM's profits. You see, IPPs don't deliver constant power to the grid, but they keep getting paid constantly. Now, ESCOM must sell the IPP's power to the consumers first before it can sell its own power to the consumers. That doesn't make sense because the IPP's are being given first priority and then ESCOM is secondary. That's already eating into ESCOM's profits, which doesn't make sense. The, 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 the methodology of the operation of the IPP's, they are driven by a mass buy principle. In other words, if a power station brings energy to the grid and the IPPs also do the same, you will not sell the, the energy from, from a power station, you will sell fast the energy from the, from, from, the, from, from the IPPs, meaning that ESCOM sales are being destroyed by the, by the IPPs. Secondly, it is not true that um, IPPs have invested, they have invested at the back of guarantees that government has basically um, um, have, have, have moved and, 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 and given. I say that from where we're sitting, we think that there is a conflict of interest on, uh, there is a dynamic link between the political elite that is taking this decision about the future of ESCOM and business interests that make money. And um, I mean, we, we will not be able to say, look, but we know, I mean, if, for instance, there is a much talked about problem, which I mean, we should be, is it a lie? We should be throwing it to the president. We should be throwing it to Mr. Mutsipe. We should be throwing it to, to, to Minister Jeff Kadebe. 
There is a trio which is in relation to family setup where we are told that there, there is a company, whether you call it Pembani, that the family is part of the business. And, and I mean, if, you, if you're looking on what Rod Charles is doing, we have not gone out of the, of the crisis. We are inside the forest when it comes to state capture of everybody says we've moved away from a state capture. But from where we're sitting, what we're smelling, what we're seeing is a, is a crystallization of a state capture in front of our eyes. Well, if you look at it as a conspiracy, then it makes sense why they would want to kill ESCO for their own benefits, because this contract benefits the IPP's companies first before ESCOM gets anything from this situation. And who's connected to these IPP companies? You'll be shocked if you check that behind the scenes of the people benefiting from this thing is the same people who are presenting us with the problem. They're also presenting us with the solution but their solutions don't even work. Basically, we're being screwed left, right, and center. We might as well go stand in a street corner like hookers as a whole country and let all these politicians screw us. Andre de Reiter has resigned as ESCOM chief executive. This comes on the back of continued and prolonged rolling blackouts. Last week, the power utility escalated the rotational power cuts to stage six after experiencing generation challenges. There have been growing calls for Director to step down amid the rolling blackouts. Director was appointed ESCOM CEO in December 2019.